Right, so the first in a couple of videos that I'm going to do on replacing the brakes on this uh, Ford Mondeo, um, disc brakes back and front, but I am going to do two videos because there are some uh, differences between the uh, the front and the rear. Uh, the rear today, and uh, this is the one uh, that you may have heard about with the wind back piston uh, on, the, on the caliper. Uh, that's to do with the, the way the handbrake mechanism works, so it makes it a bit different. Um, the only other thing I'll say before we start is if you're a complete beginner, then maybe a brake job is not really the place you'd want to start. Um, not that I'm any sort of expert, I'm not a mechanic. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're at all intimidated by this sort of thing, then um, then maybe think about starting on some other sorts of jobs first, just because brakes are so critical with regard to safety. The rear brake calipers incorporate the handbrake mechanism, so it's important that the handbrake is released. Uh, that mechanism also has a habit of seizing on these cars, so uh, you need to know that the lever is releasing the caliper as it should be before you start this. Now, I've done a rear caliper replacement uh, along with a few videos on the handbrake itself and the handbrake cable, if you're interested. Uh, but if you know it's fine, then uh, obviously you need the rear of the car lifted up and the wheels off. The first thing to do is to uh, take the caliper itself off and that's held in place by the two bolts at the end of its slider pins. These are 13 millimeter hexes and they're not on very tight, so they should crack loose easily enough, both the top and the bottom. And um, I used a ratchet handle to undo them and take them out. Now that is all that holds the caliper on and uh, at this point it should pull away. However, sometimes they get a bit stuck uh, if the pads are old or, or rusty. Uh, or if the handbrake mechanism uh, isn't releasing as much as it should. So um, as mine would not come by hand, uh, I got a screwdriver to uh, lever it with. Uh, you could also just tap it with a soft hammer. Um, and I just worked it away like this. Now at the same time, you need something to suspend the caliper with. Uh, in my case, I used this shock cord and I just looped it around the suspension coil spring where it was happy to just hang like this. Uh, you need to do this because the brake line is of course still connected to the car and the caliper is heavy enough to damage that if you uh, let any weight go onto it, uh, much less if you try to balance it somehow and then it falls. Now I should also say that uh, I have not disconnected the handbrake cable. Um, the workshop manual says that you should, but um, as you can see that's not necessary, although you, um, you certainly could if you wanted to. Now, with the caliper suspended, I had a look at the piston and gave it a bit of a clean up with a rag. Um, I'd suggest being careful with the rubber boot, but uh, certainly clean the surface of the piston um, as well as possible. And then uh, next, that piston needed to be retracted. Now, I decided to do the job properly, so to say, by allowing the uh, brakes to bleed while pushing the piston back in. Now, even if you don't, uh, you do need to take off the brake fluid cap in the engine bay because the fluid will be pushed back up there. Um, but I went further and I got out my brake bleeder kit, uh, which I've talked about in more detail in my video on brake fluid bleeding. So I'm not going to elaborate on that here. Um, I took a bit of fluid out of the tank and used it in my bleeder jar. Uh, you'll need to take out a little fluid anyway uh, if the level is at the maximum. Uh, because that level will, will be pushed up a bit when you retract the piston. Uh, but my plan was to eventually renew all the fluid anyway. So I hooked up the uh, brake bleeder kit, which is to say my little plastic tube and jar. And uh, essentially uh, what this is going to do is allow me to push the piston in uh, while avoiding ramming fluid backward up to the master cylinder, which hypothetically has the potential to flip its seals and give you a bad day. In reality, I'm not sure that this is really a concern, uh, even less so on the rear brakes. Um, but in the workshop manual does not instruct this bleeding step, so you'd probably be fine skipping it. However, I was close to uh, needing to replace my brake fluid anyway, um, during which I would of course bleed the calipers. Um, and I figured I'd do it at the same time and uh, show you how to do it the OTT autistic perfectionist way. Now, to do the retraction, you need a tool to push and turn the piston. Now, on this caliper, I was able to just use a pair of pliers, uh, needle nose pliers. It was rebuilt recently and the piston still turns easily. Uh, the left caliper needed turning counterclockwise. And as you can see, 
As it retracts, the brake fluid is getting pushed out the bleed valve and into my little kit. And it wants to be wound all the way back as far as it will go, basically, um, especially if you're replacing both pads and the rotor. The piston surface will end up a bit close to flush with the surrounding body of the caliper. Finally, it's instructed that the uh, piston be oriented in a certain way. Um, on the left side, there is a circular opening, which is to be aligned with the little nib on the inside of the caliper body. And that one's done. The right hand side was a lot tighter to turn on my car and uh, I could not get it to shift with the pliers. So I had to resort to a uh, trip to the, um, to the tool shop and a proper tool, uh, which in this case is a long reach 12 millimeter hex socket bit, um, which I'm just using with my ratchet handle. Uh, different calipers, uh, especially the later years, um, have different tool requirements. I think the later ones don't have the hex, uh, but you can buy special adapters. And I suggest that you do get the right attachment for a ratchet um, and just use that because the uh, the threaded spreader tools can uh, only be wound in the one direction because, of course, the thread only goes in one direction. Uh, speaking of which, uh, notice on this right-hand caliper that I am winding it also counterclockwise, which is very strange because the workshop manual and uh, other things you'll find around the place very clearly instruct that the uh, right-hand caliper should be wound clockwise. But the uh, video does not lie, I promise, I promise you I'm not uh, tricking you, and you can see that that's not right at all. And also, uh, this apparently varies depending on the year and model, it's opposite depending on whether the caliper is uh, pre or post 2004, and uh, also opposite between the estate and the four and five door cars. Uh, but what I'm going to have to say here is, uh, given my experiences, maybe try the official way first, uh, but certainly use common sense and uh, obviously do it the other way if that's what works instead. Now once the caliper is retracted, the uh, brake bleed valve can be closed and uh, here with the bleed kit the idea is that the whole valve is submerged while you do this, so check that it is, uh, otherwise you risk allowing air into the system and then the, uh, the bleed kit can go away and uh, that part of the caliper is finished with. Next, the pads can come out. They might pull out by hand easily enough, uh, but the help of a tool um, certainly made it easier for me. Do both pads, there's one on each side of course. And then, since I uh, needed to replace my rotors too, the caliper carrier is to be removed, uh, which has another two bolts holding it onto the car. Now, these have a higher torque tightening specification, so they will be harder to undo and I've seen them rusted on pretty badly before, so they may present a challenge for you. Uh, you might need to use heat. Um, but anyway, try a good quality socket. Uh, they're also 13 millimeter heads, and uh, try not to round off the heads. Uh, in my case, I didn't have any problems, and they both let go without issue, and uh, then I used the ratchet again to undo them. Uh, these ones have thread locker on them, so they will not spin out too easily, so you'll probably be using the ratchet for the uh, whole length of the threads. And then with the bolts out, the, uh, the caliper carrier will be loose and free. I took the rotor off next, and uh, it certainly would not just pull off. Um, it's normal for these to get seized on with corrosion. You can tap them with a hammer, and uh, that will usually get them off. Uh, I would just say uh, be careful and don't go hitting it too hard. Uh, or with too big of a sledgehammer, as you can damage the hub or, or at minimum lock, knock your wheel alignment out and then need a alignment after. Uh, if you have trouble, then uh, try heat again or maybe levering it off with a, another tool. Um, right, uh, then it was time for new brakes. Now these rotors are centric, nothing special, but they are coated, which means that they are not just raw steel, which will turn into the nasty, rusty mess that my old ones were and yours probably are too. Now the pads of course will wear the braking surface down, that's fine. Um, what I'm talking about is the hub hat at the center and the back of that you know, where the lugs go uh, and the outside rims. So uh, they should stay looking nice and clean and silver and also they shouldn't rust onto the hub. Uh, they just sit onto the lugs, no retaining hardware for these ones. Uh, they'll be held true by the wheel and its lug nuts later. So it looks nice. Uh, but next it was time to uh, do some donkey work with the caliper carrier. Uh, basically clean it up. Now, firstly, the slider pins need to come out because uh, they always need some maintenance work. Uh, they just pull out with a good tug 
and you'll see the remnants of whatever grease was used previously and they'll need cleaning up too. First though, their rubber boots should be taken out. Uh, just give them a squeeze and a pull and uh, then you'll be left with just the metal body of the carrier. Um, I hit that with brake clean. The idea is to clean up the whole thing and I used a nylon brush on it too. Now you'll see a wire brush in a moment, but that would damage the paint, so it's best to use a softer brush. Uh, but go over the whole thing and uh, get off all of the crap. Uh, there'll be years worth of uh, built up caked brick dust. And then the wire brush can come out and uh, what you want to do is give the area where the pads sit and slide a good scrub with that. Uh, you want to remove all the dirt and all the loose rust and the like. Uh, the idea is to get a nice, clean, smooth surface for those pads to be able to move in and out on. And finally, I doused it down once more with uh, the brake clean. And you can shoot some brake clean up in the slider pin holes too to uh, get out some of that old grease. And uh, clean the pins up too, but uh, again, just a nylon brush uh, or even just a rag in collaboration with a bit of brake clean will be fine. Uh, just get all the old grease off them. And then I let all that hardware, including the carrier, sit to drain and dry for a few minutes. Uh, and in the meantime, while I had the wire brush in hand, I cleaned up the bolts, uh, all four of them. Uh, at least the carrier bolts will have the remains of old thread locker on them, so you do want to try to get as much as that off as uh, you can. And I should say at the point, uh, at this point, that it's also a good idea to keep the bolts matched to their holes. In other words, uh, try to keep a note of which was the upper and which was the lower bolt. So, when everything was clean and dry, things could start going back together. Firstly, the slider pins should be re-greased, and the ideal is silicone grease, as you see here. That's what Ford specify, and it is the best stuff. There are other alternatives, like uh, lithium grease, uh, that's the white stuff that was on these previously, I think, and that would be fine too. Uh, whatever you do, you must not use a petroleum-based grease, uh, because it would not be compatible, probably, with the rubber involved. Uh, and you also mustn't use anti-seize, which you're going to see me using uh, on other things in a moment. Anyway, I just coated the joints of the rubber boots in a bit of it and uh, pushed them back in place. And then the pins themselves get a good, generous coating. Now, these pins are what makes a floating caliper a floating caliper. And uh, if they're not properly greased and lubricated, if they start to seize up, then you'll obviously get brake problems, like, uh, for example, uneven wear. The inside pad and the rotor inside will make a lot uh, wear a lot more than the outside. Anyway, once greased up, the pins just push back into place. Uh, make sure the boots pop themselves back so as to make a seal. Um, by the way, the pins are not the same. Uh, one has a rubber bushing, and the holes in the carrier are accordingly not the same size, although they look very close. So you should keep track again of upper versus lower, and if you get them mixed up, uh, to see uh, just see which hole gives the loosest fit, and that is the one in which the uh, rubber bushed pin needs to go. So next, uh, anti-seize needs to be applied to those uh, pad contact areas on the carrier, which I cleaned up with the wire brush. Now, the point of this is to provide uh, both some lubrication for movement and uh, reducing noise, uh, but also just to um, coat the surface and uh, you know try to prevent rust buildup. And this can be the copper stuff. Uh, and what you see here is nickel. Uh, either works fine. Uh, use enough of it to cover the surfaces uh, needed. Um, but do not make a mess, and uh, you want to be careful with the excess and uh, with a view to not getting it on the surface of the new rotor, which of course ends up uh, very closely positioned to the caliper. So um, don't, you know, don't put a, a huge dab on there and then um, expect to clean it up later. It's much easier to get it right now. So with that done, the, uh, the last step in preparation is to apply thread locker. This is a Loctite 243 Blue. Uh, to the carrier bolts, and uh, then the carrier can be put back on. So I was as careful as I could be handling it uh, to avoid making a mess with that anti-seize, uh, but it's not difficult, and um, I tighten the bolts up with the ratchet uh, to get everything in place. And then you really uh, should have a torque wrench. Uh, the tightening torque on these rear carriers is 80 newton meters, and uh, given us brakes we're talking about here, I really recommend you do use a torque wrench and don't try to just guess it. Uh, both bolts get torqued, and uh, then the thread locker can be left alone to set. Now the pads. 
Now, this is one of my old ones, uh, basically an okay shape, but uh, you can get some hints as to problems with the braking system and the calipers uh, by looking at the old pads. Uh, for instance, if they're unevenly worn, uh, these look okay. And uh, here are the new ones, which look even more okay. Uh, same brand as the rotors, again, uh, nothing special, but anyway, check that they're the right types, the right size, and uh, notice how much thicker they are. And uh, that, along with the uh, rotor wear, is of course why that caliper piston needed winding back. So the way these work is the fitting hardware forms a spring, uh, which compresses the opposite side of the pad plate against the carrier body. So they just sort of snap in, you just push them in and then slide them inwards. Uh, I found it easier to get them in place by um, holding the spring a little, by uh, pushing it against the carrier, and then they just snap inwards against the rotor face. Uh, same for the inside one. And that's the uh, consumable hardware renewed. Just the caliper needs to go back in place now. Um, I used a little Loctite on the bolts, but you don't need to, it's not specified. Now you um, also want to use a bit of anti-seize on the contact points between the caliper and the pad backing plates. And what I suggest is uh, applying that on the caliper side of things as opposed to the pads, because that means that you only put it where it needs to go because the caliper side of things is much smaller. Uh, namely, that's the uh, piston face and the inside of the uh, caliper fork opposite. Now you see people slathering the whole pad with anti-seize and I think that's nuts because this stuff is sticky um, and it's just going to attract the buildup of brake dust and other crap and make a real mess over time. So yeah, just use a minimal amount on the caliper and again, be careful where you get the stuff and uh, keep it away from the rotor. Then the whole caliper will slide back over the pads uh, into its position relative to the carrier. Uh, that is, of course, if you wound the piston back far enough. Uh, get the bolts done, uh, inserted and done up uh, in the pins, and then use the uh, torque wrench on them. The tightening torque is uh, 30 newton meters for these. Uh, you may need to hold the pins with a crescent spanner, uh, just be careful not to damage the rubber boot. Uh, but usually the pin ends up jamming down against the caliper face and uh, it won't turn against the wrench. Yeah, 30 newton meters. And with the uh, bottom bolt, um, this was a problem on doing it too, but it depends on the particular socket and tools that you're using. I couldn't get my torque wrench in there because the head is too big to fit. It's obstructed by the suspension arm. So I needed to use an extension and then I had enough free space, free space to um, operate the torque wrench. Now to make sure that bleed valve nipple was tightened down enough and uh, don't forget to put it dust, its dust cover back on. And lastly, uh, give the rotor a good wash down with brake clean. Um, often rotors come coated in oil for uh, rust prevention, which you uh, must absolutely must wash off. Uh, these ones were coated, as I said, so they're a bit different. They, they were not covered in oil. Um, but no matter how careful I was doing the job, I was always going to get a bit of oil or grease on them. So it's a good idea to do this regardless. And finally, you need to push the piston back out to uh, meet the new brakes. Now I suggest that you do both sides, uh, you complete both sides before this, but you um, must do this before driving the car because otherwise the pedal will uh, go through the floor before you get any brakes. Uh, the piston just pushes out and uh, sets itself and the caliper in the right position. And uh, then you can just check that the rotors are still spinning okay and that the uh, pistons aren't seizing for any reason. Okay, that's about it. Um, brakes and pads replaced on the rear and uh, everything working as expected. Only a few more things to do. Um, if you weren't going to do any more work on the brakes, then now's the time to top up the um, brake cylinder with brake fluid, of course, because remember we uh, took some out before and we've bled more since then. Um, but I'm going to do uh, more work. I'm going to do the uh, front brakes as well. That will be in a separate video. Otherwise, that's it. Just put the wheel back on and uh, that's it. I hope that was helpful. Have fun.